Herzlich willkommen zu unserer Spezialsendung zum langen Tag der Flucht auf den Community-Sendern FS1 Salzburg und der Radiofabrik Salzburg. Den langen Tag der Flucht organisiert die UNHCR zum vierten Mal in Salzburg mit lokalen Partnerinnen und Organisationen. Informationen dazu könnt ihr finden auf der Webseite www.langertagderflucht.at. Heute bei mir zu Gast ist der Essam El Mishergi. Hallo Essam. Hallo. Da Essam spricht zwar gut Deutsch, genau, aber du wolltest das Interview trotzdem in Englisch machen. Heute. Genau. genau. So, und deshalb wechseln wir auch gleich in die englische Sprache. So, welcome to our special program on the community TV stations FS1 or FS1 and Radio Fabrik Salzburg. This is our special broadcast for the long day of flight, also langer Tag der Flucht. And in the studio I can welcome Essam El Michergi. Okay. Hi Essam. Hello. For you in the studio is Sabaha Sinanovic and on the camera is Fabian Bellmann. And for the regie, the director is Andreas Madlena. So this is our team and now I'm going to tell you who Essam El Meshherg is. So Essam, I have your CV here. <laughs> Essam, you are from Libya. Yeah. Yeah. And you are um, you've studied medicine and surgery mm -hmm. in Tripoli. Yeah. yeah. You have an experience as a as a doctor already. Yeah. yeah. And you came to Austria with a program. So with which program did you come to uh, Austria or to Salzburg? Yeah, I came as a fellow, uh, fellow and uh, had a fellowship from the AAIAA, International mm -hmm. Atomic Energy Agency. Mm -hmm. um, and it lasted for uh, two years and about three months. But uh, unfortunately, the war started one year and a half in Libya for some reasons. And for security reasons, I could not go back. So yeah. I asked for the asylum here. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can I do? I know, sweet, okay. So this is, you, you then stayed in, in Austria, mm -hmm. or in Salzburg. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You're studying, or you plan to study the PhD in Salzburg? Yeah, but first of all, I have to be a, a good Deutsch. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have to learn Deutsch uh, till B2. B And then I have to go through qualifications, notification. Yeah. After that, I can go through the uh, Austrian program, Austrian board medical board, mm -hmm. about four or five years. Or I can choose to have a PhD for three for three years. Mm -hmm. And your um, how can you say? Yeah, and your sp special education is with nuclear medicine. Yeah, I'm a nuclear medicine doctor. Yeah. What does a nuclear medicine doctor does? <laughs> ah, it's uh, it's some sort of radiology mm -hmm. that we bring the patient, we give him an injection of radioisotopes, mm -hmm. and he starts to radiate. Ah, <laughs> and then, okay. And then a special camera called gamma camera pick up these radiations and transfer it into an image. It, mm -hmm. it is for um, so many applications for in, uh, tumors, metastases, in the mm -hmm. knochen. For Schildrose, mm -hmm. auch for osteoporose, for, um, and also we have the PET CT, it's a very good tool for oncology, mm -hmm. diagnosis, and also for follow up and other, so many other applications. Okay, so it's, it's really a special, and special interesting, medicine. And interesting, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Essam, but you are now, at the moment, you were very active as a volunteer with yeah. the refugees. Mm -hmm. So, what was your personal motivation to help the refugees on the train station? Yeah, uh, it, it holds th three parts, a humanitarian side, mm -hmm. religious side, and also uh, from my medical profession. A humanitarian side that all of us should help such people in such a crisis. You mm -hmm. help, I help, everyone with, without, uh, without, uh, on regard of the religion, okay? And uh, the religion side that I'm a Muslim and they are Muslims and we mm -hmm. should help each other. And of course, as a, as a doctor, this is my place to help. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a doctor to help to relieve the pain, you know? So I have to do the best for them. 
and also I'm, I'm as well I'm also an asylum seeker and I, I feel what they feel mm-hmm. to some somehow so it is it is interesting to have this view you have the hypocrite um aid or how, how is it called the hypocratische aid it would be in in german that all doctors have you mean the the, the swear yeah 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 i've already made it yeah yeah I mean, it. in libya yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure it is a little bit a little bit different with some education mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay but but it's the principle it's, is the same yeah mm-hmm. okay so um you were there to translate to which languages did you translate i translate from english to arabic because mm-hmm. still my english is better than my than German. my deutsch yeah my okay. German, yeah. yeah but but uh, you talk very good jo- deutsch yeah, yeah. You're, you're just a little bit yeah. uh unsecure but it's it's getting <laughs> yeah. better <laughs> yeah especially for them yeah yeah <laughs> uh Esam, do you have the impression that the refugees are welcome in salzburg Somehow, yeah. Some uh, some people really love uh, to help them and mm-hmm. welcoming them in, in Austria. Um, we, we will talk about Austria, what I have seen, okay? Yeah, oh, in, in yeah. Salzburg. Yeah, in Salzburg, especially in Salzburg. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen so many people just giving everything they can. Some people mm-hmm. give the, the food or, or, or the clothes and they cry. And mm-hmm. all I have also seen the police woman mm-hmm. crying when she saw the families running for the trains mm-hmm. and also a, a policeman and that was that uh, they couldn't find such a treatment or deal in mm-hmm. Hungary and other other Good. European countries mm-hmm. so they are welcome but I have this some discussions with other Austrians Salzburgers mm-hmm. they have angst mm-hmm. they are afraid yeah. you know they are welcoming the families okay but with the young people they are really afraid Mm-hmm. What, what will happen, you know? There are huge numbers, too many people. Is it especially because there are a lot of young men around yeah, from yeah, Syria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not only from Syria, that, to be mm-hmm. honest. Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, mm-hmm. you know? But for the families, most of them say it's okay. Mm-hmm. Families, children, you know, we, mm-hmm. we can accept it, but what we, about the others? Mm-hmm. And, uh, they, ha- they have angst, you know? <laughs> they are afraid of some... And unfortunately, some people, they don't like it, you know, just taking the negative sides, mm-hmm. especially when the, those uh, uh, Azul verbal, when they uh, hear about the train, they go le- leaving their stuff. Mm-hmm. They're running for life. Yeah. But other people think, no, they are leaving their stuff. They are making our mm-hmm. city not clean, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's okay. With time, I think it will improve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will. Yeah. You were in Vienna too. D- did you see how the situation in Vienna mm, no, is? No, no, I didn't go there. You just in Salzburg. You were just in yeah. Salzburg, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you were at the German border. Too? Yeah. How yes. Is... Yesterday I was there. Yeah. I was helping the uh, Maltese organization. Mm-hmm. Malt- Maltese. Yeah. Maltese, yeah, Maltese, mm-hmm. because they are very good, well organized uh, organization, mm-hmm. and they asked for my help. I went there. I think in the border is. It's better for the Azul Verber, as, mm-hmm. as there's a better place than the pan, half and half. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, air is better, yeah. condition is better for them. But it's also uh, a disaster. Uh, mm-hmm. People waiting in the, in, the, in the rain yesterday, making tents, making shelter, just waiting for the borders to open, even for two or three minutes. Mm-hmm. But I think there are too many volunteers there that are working good with the Red Cross and Maltese. Yeah, yeah. also, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think Caritas was there. Yeah, Caritas Diakonie also, and, yeah. And yeah. uh, Rotes Kreuz, mm. and uh, there are a lot of organizations. Lot, yeah, and a lot of individual mm-hmm. yeah. volunteers. Like activists. Yeah, activists, activists. yeah. Mm-hmm. Help us. Mm-hmm. Which organizations are active to help the refugees? We've now mentioned some. Did you see m- more? Then yeah, yeah. Now, there are too, ma- there? There are too mm-hmm. many. Uh, I can, I can tell. I can say that the one of the best is the, the Muslimish uh, young Österreich. Yeah. Muslimish young yeah. Österreich. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're very well organized, mm-hmm. very good in uh, the system, and they're very, very active. You know, mm-hmm. and also the normal individuals who, are, who belongs to no, mm-hmm. not any organization. I, I remember that one day we we uh, just prepared sandwiches with cheese with with a normal Palestinian woman 
Mm -hmm. The other day with the Turkish family, they are doing very well also. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the Caritas, mm -hmm. the Red Cross, and we don't. We should mention also the big goal of the army. Yeah. As a doctor, I have seen a big difference. Yeah, yeah, when they came, everything was running in a good, very good system. Yeah. It, it is an army, you know. System is system, and yeah. they have they have their doctors and and their medication. I think when they get there, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the medical side. Precisely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about the medical side, how is the situation now in, in the garage? So uh, is there a problem with that, that people get sick because they don't have uh, fresh air? Yeah, I, th I, I think it's better for them to go in, in near the border. There's a place in Liefering, mm -hmm. you know, it's more aviation, better for them. The garage, it is, it is made for, for cars, whatever mm -hmm. you do, whatever. And they should, and they cannot clean it every day. I think to get yeah. all of these people out, yeah, it's not that good situation. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, but you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think the garage is just for transit, so that they are some hours there, or maybe for one night, and and then yeah, move yeah I know that. But some of them are for two days. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. They, they and stay especially, there. I'm talking especially about the children. Mm -hmm. The that's the the main problem. The families. No, mm -hmm. but I think for families it's it's very hard that you have to pack everything and then go maybe somewhere on the border where you don't know if the if you can if you can stay there. Yeah, and in the garage it's kind of secure because then you can wait for a train and. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, you are right on one side, but then the other side. Yesterday when I was in Liffering, mm -hmm. they had a very good. Uh, it's better. I'm not. I'm comparing it with the garage. No. A better place with the uh, heaters, mm -hmm. or just for the women and their children. And that's mm -hmm. very good, with the very good blankets and everything was good there. I think it's better than staying in the garage, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the um, German border usually they uh, facilitate the movement of families in the first place. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have the impression that uh, refugees, are they depressed about the situation or can you see a glimpse of hope? Both. Oh. They are really depressed. First, first of all, what they have been through, mm -hmm. I think, is enough to be mm -hmm. <laughs> They have depression. Either the Iraqis or the Syrians or, or even the Afghani, Afghanistan mm -hmm. people. Yeah, they, some of them are really depressed and especially when they get there in Panhof or even in the borders in Germany mm -hmm. and they cannot get to the borders. They could mm -hmm. not get, go to Germany. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the waiting, the hours, uh, the waiting hours or even the days make them very, really, very depressed and more, more depressed. And some of them already, as I told you, came here with some disorders, you know. Mm -hmm. But also I have, well, I have seen a very, very good, big hope in their mm -hmm. eyes. I remember that... Uh, a young 15 year old uh, girl who had her mother killed mm -hmm. by bomb the the whole house collapsed and her mother was killed but she was completely laughing and as 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 she is looking for a new life mm -hmm. and it is a new life and that's why uh, when you see them running for the running for the train or for the borders they want to start their new life because they hope the best mm -hmm in Germany and I hope they get the best in Germany and of course some of them are going to Sweden and huh? mm -hmm. Norway yeah I met a young man who said like he wants to go to Finland because he saw pictures from Finland yeah. and he has a cousin there and he especially he wants to go to Finland yeah usually mm -hmm. they, they go to uh, countries where they have families and relatives mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. and I think Germany is the is number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that Germany is is this number is on this number one position? I, I don't know. You know, uh, when they ask me, I told mm -hmm. them even Austria is, is a very good yeah. place for you. And mm -hmm. now, especially now, the Germany is full of mm -hmm. uh, of, of asylum seekers. When they ask my advice, I tell them you can mm -hmm. stay here; it's better. Yeah. Especially for Syrians, they will mm -hmm. not have that long time to wait. Especially if they have families to get yeah. the positive. The hours wise, mm -hmm. but I don't know how it is. Well. I think many of them have relatives in Germany mm -hmm. from from long from long ago. Yeah, maybe it's it's just like in in their heads or in their minds that Germany is like kind of a paradise. Yeah, maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. It's not like that, but for a better life. 
Mm-hmm. Not uh, it's not very bad. I yeah, I don't like to use this word with him, but it's for a better life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe Germany is a synonym for 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 a new life. Yeah, especially you know the officials in Germany mm-hmm. accepted them and they give uh, announced that they are welcome. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, so they were more happy to be in Germany. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isam, can you explain us why are now at the moment so many refugees here? Like the war in Syria, it started in 2011. 2011. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why do they flee now? Uh, well, uh, maybe this needs a politician to mm-hmm. answer. But I, uh, from my point of view, there are many, many reasons. Uh, the frustrations, mm-hmm. they, are, they feel that they fell down. They are waiting so many uh, years for a solution, political solution, but there was no solutions, no military solution, you know, and the army is bombing them every day. There is no hope to stay. Even the families who are, are not hurt, they run away, flee to Lebanon, Turkey, and mm-hmm. also the very bad conditions in some camps, as we mm-hmm. heard and we have seen, you know. So. The, and and as as I told you and also the announcement of the German officials on some European that they will take them, mm-hmm. so with all these uh, conditions and circumstances, I think they all rushing now towards Europe. Mm-hmm. Why why they don't go to the Arabic countries like Saudi Arabia or Oman or Yemen or somewhere? Because I'm often asked this at at the train station at the Bahnhof. And some people ask me, yeah, but why don't they go to Saudi Arabia? There's a lot of space there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if Saudi Arabia opens the borders and build camps for them, I think many of them will 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 prefer to stay in an Arab country with the same tradition, with so many, uh, I think, more offers to for jobs and uh, such things. But I don't know really why the Arab countries don't open the mm-hmm. borders. We in Libya, we have so many thousands that mm-hmm. they live there and they are very good in business. Mm-hmm. They have so many, they open so many shops, cafe, restaurants, they're doing well, you know. But why the Gulf countries did not open the borders? That's what we, I cannot tell why, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So it's not, not really understandable. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. How can you, as a doctor or as a translator, help the refugees? I have some experience before in Libya, as I worked in, uh, in the IMC, the International Medical Corps, is an American com- uh, American organization in this PFA, the Psychological First Aid. Mm-hmm. So we, we try to, I try to listen to them. Good communication. I try to be a, a good communication skills with them. So we mm-hmm. listen to them, let them uh, release all the tension provide the basic needs they need that's the before that is the first step to to support for psychological support you know the basic needs try to reach their families i, I remember that i gave uh, about my phone i helped them calling their relatives in germany in sweden for many times that's very important for them mm-hmm. and uh, you know even the medical the medical side uh, i helped them I'm trying to help them a lot in treating them and helping the other colleagues that they, in translation and also in uh, having a brief history of the medical condition that the other colleagues don't have to wait too much. Mm-hmm. So, and also, I, I, I also clean for them. It's okay, you know, sometimes we cover the children when they with the blankets. Mm-hmm. We do our best. Mm-hmm. We do our best to help them either medical or humanitarian side. Uh, you told me an example of a family with a handicapped child. Yeah. How did it? Also, can you maybe just explain this? As anonymous, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you explain this yeah. example? That, 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 that's one. I I feel as of one of my duties mm-hmm. that I go around the families, pick up and write down the names of the family that have handicaps. Some mm-hmm. are mentally retarded. Some have some muscle weakness, mm-hmm. according to brain damage. Some are, uh, we, I, I saw a family with a, a congenital cardiac anomaly and mm-hmm. ha- open heart surgery. So we try our best 
and uh, thank uh, I was very happy that we could manage to help two families and we convinced the police that please let them go to the train before anyone else mm -hmm. and they managed to take them one I think I remember that one was with multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and the other girl was handicapped she had a brain damage while she has when she was a child and muscle weakness and that was it was a great day for me mm -hmm. you know because families are the, the, the first priority and handicaps are more should be in a very very special need and take very good care of mm -hmm. Okay, so have you maybe a suggest suggestion? <laughs> oh my God, my English. You know, have you a suggestion how other volunteers can help? I mean, I was there by myself, and mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, or maybe you just mm -hmm. <laughs> just explain what other helpers can do. First of all, well, the most important is to respect them, because mm -hmm. there are some negative points even with the volunteers because they are m many of them are not professional mm -hmm. and some are professional and just always tell them to respect them and don't abuse them they had enough mm -hmm. don't shout at them don't judge on them let them uh, feel that they are at home and that we are here just to help them and we have we, are, we get no money and we don't we don't need any money to help so what I need from the volunteers, number one, is to respect and do your best to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as a, maybe I can explain what I did mm -hmm. there. As a, because there were some people bringing clothes there, yeah. and then I sorted them like um, clothes for male, for women, and for children. And it, it was just sorting, like uh, I think five hours, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just mm -hmm. sorting. And the shoes, I sorted them for women and for men and for children. Then what was the next? Ah, yeah. Then I was making sandwiches, yeah. like some hours. <laughs> it was like you know, yeah, I'm putting the cheese on it and mm -hmm. putting it in 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 small bags. Then yeah, of course, um, I picked up the waste. Yeah. So yeah. and like and I cleaned mm -hmm. up a little bit. Then what did I? Yeah, with the Muslimish youth, okay, also yeah. with the Muslimish youth organization. I also made some sandwiches and we made uh, like the special one, uh, halal or halal. Halal, yeah. yeah. That's most important for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this is important too. And then when somebody had a, a special question, like one young man, he had very small feet mm -hmm. and then he need to find shoes, but there were just uh, shoes with like 40 and, and with uh, uh, bigger ones. And then I was uh, walking around with him and trying to find smaller shoes for him. And at least we found some yeah, yeah. together with mm -hmm. another Bosnian volunteer and we find some sh shoes for him and he was very happy. And what did I then? Ah, yeah, then for, for the children. Uh, there was a woman bringing us some um, like um, paper to to draw on it mm -hmm. and some stifte. I don't yeah. know what is stifte in English. <laughs> so we had uh, that they can paint something, and then we gave it to the children, and we tried to to give everybody something, so that that you don't put it in the middle and then they just fight for it. But yeah. we gave yeah. everyone in 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 the hands one. And that, so that and that's what uh, now this Scott are making. The mm -hmm. fat finger, fat finger. Yeah, yeah, they're very, very, very good mm -hmm. in, um, you know, uh, exploring the feeling of the, those children with paintings, games, mm -hmm. and I think this is a, a very good place for the fat finger. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that there are free organizations even. So it's you, you've mentioned the Fahrtfinder and mm -hmm. the, the Kinderfreunde too and mm -hmm. the Verein Spektrum because I saw today that they are looking for volunteers for the for the children, mm -hmm. so for Kinderbetreuung, so if there are out there are some students from pedagogic, um, if you want to help the refugees and if you want to play with the refugee children or paint something with them, then um, go to one of these organizations like Kinderfreunde, Verein Spektrum or Pfadfinder and ask them and tell them that you want to help and they will then find find a place for you to yeah, help. Yeah, that's very nice. Was, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was yeah the last questions? Uh, Esam, you were visiting to um, the Begegnungen in Park. It's mm -hmm. meet and greet Maybe in the park. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, and it was in the Volksgarten mm -hmm. in Salzburg. And when it rains, it's in the Uni Park. How often is this meet and greet, and how is the atmosphere there? Uh, it is every two weeks. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think it, it is from 3 o'clock p.m. Mm-hmm. up to 5 o'clock. Oh, I think from 5, five to 7, yeah, 5 yeah. to 7, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it is, it, it, the atmosphere is very nice, that all of them gathering there, having fun, cooking, playing, you know. Mm-hmm. And the best thing that they should uh, engage the Austrians, the, Salz, the Salzburgers, you know. And mm-hmm. they already made it, and that's, that's good for, for, for refugees, for the Salzburgers. But I hope also that yeah, with, the, with the future, the next years, that it should be not only for refugee welcome, mm-hmm. that it should be in the middle of Walker's Garden with the, with, among the Austrians. Wow. That would be for more integration. Yeah, this, this, this would be very nice. So if you want to go to one of this begegnungen in park or meet and greet in the park, I have the website here. And it is salzburg.refugees-welcome.at Also salzburg.refugees-welcome.at So this is when you want to go to the park, to the Begegnungen im Park, meet and greet in the park. And when it rains, it is in the Unipark Nontal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then the next one I wanted to ask you was... If I find it, yeah. Um, the, the volunteers, can you approximately s- uh, tell us how many volunteers are there? The half and half? Yeah. What tens, would you tens, say? Tens, tens. Mm. Yeah. I think it's more than 50 or more than 100. I'm mm, n- mm. Around around 50, maybe a little bit less because mm-hmm. we don't we don't need very 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 large number of volunteers you know mm-hmm. only when there's uh, SN or the mm-hmm. yeah yeah and if they, they, when they distribute okay. yeah you need more but for the translators you don't need that big number mm-hmm. okay so uh, are you in contact with the other translators yes yeah yeah mm-hmm. where are they they from Arabic countries from Afghanistan, mm-hmm. that's the most, and Iran, are from Iran. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are there Austrians speaking Arabic? Uh, some of them speak very good uh, yeah. German, mm-hmm. they translate German to Persian, or Farisi, mm-hmm. or, the, or to... Uh, uh, we have uh, so many uh, Kurdistan, from Kurdistan, translators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and many are Arabic, Arabic sprechen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's cool. Yeah, then, um, Essam, thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you very you much. Know. And thank you for the FS1. FS1, nice. yeah. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Also, danke dir. Um, I will say now uh, the, the websites, if somebody wants to go as a volunteer to the train station or maybe to the Austrian-German border or to one of the refugees camps, then you can find information at the Freiwilligenzentrum der Caritas. So it's www.freiwilligenzentrum-salzburg.at or on the phone number Salzburg 849373. Also ihr könnt, wenn ihr möchtet, natürlich als Freiwillige eben den Flüchtlingen helfen, zum Beispiel in eins der Flüchtlingscamps gehen oder natürlich an die deutsch-österreichische Grenze oder auf den Bahnhof, dann könntet ihr, könnt ihr euch melden beim Freiwilligenzentrum der Caritas. Informationen gibt es auf www.freiwilligenzentrum-salzburg.at oder unter der Salzburger Telefonnummer 0662 8493373. Natürlich gibt es jetzt auch mehrere andere Initiativen, zum Beispiel auch jetzt vor kurzem gestartet vom ORF mit anderen Partnerorganisationen. Da könnt ihr auch Informationen reinstellen, wenn ihr zum Beispiel sagt, ihr möchtet Deutschunterricht geben oder ihr möchtet mit den Kindern spielen oder ihr könnt medizinische Hilfe anbieten oder ein Quartier, eine Wohnung, ein Zimmer vermieten. Dann melden unter www.helfenwiewir.at. Dann gibt es das Freiwillige Engagement für Integration, das ist vom österreichischen Integrationsfonds. Da ist die Webseite www.wirsinddabei.at, also wirsinddabei.at und natürlich in Salzburg eben das Flüchtlingswelcome, also Begegnungen im Park und Meet and Greet in the Park unter salzburg.refugees-welcome. 
welcome.at. Gut. Ja, dann Essen, thank you again for okay. being here with us. This was our special broadcast for the long day of flight, also zum langen Tag der Flucht of the UNHCR, also United Nations High Commission of Refugees. It's the 25th of September, is the long day of flight, also der lange Tag der Flucht. Und wir verabschieden uns auch. Ich bedanke mich bei meinem Team, eben beim Fabian Bellmann an der Kamera, beim Andreas Madlena in der Regie und eure Moderatorin Sabaha Sinanovic. Informationen zum Langen Tag der Flucht bekommt ihr auf www.langentagderflucht.at.